Right, now let's turn to the lungs. And here's a di diagram of the lungs looked uh, from the uh, lateral point of view. The left lung, when you look at it, and I'll show you a specimen in a few minutes, is longer than the right lung. For the simple reason, as I showed you on those chest x-rays, the right dome of the diaphragm is higher than the left dome because the liver is, up, is pushing up the right dome of the diaphragm. Therefore, the right lung is pushed up more by the liver than the left lung with the stomach underlying the left dome of the diaphragm. However, if you take the two lungs out and weigh them, the, left, the longer left lung weighs less than the shorter right lung because, of course, the heart on the left side excavates the cardiac impression of the left lung, makes this a smaller, lighter uh, lobe than the right. <clears throat> Now, a striking feature of the lungs is that it's divided into lobes. On the left side, there is an oblique fissure which separates an upper lobe from a lower lobe. On the right side, there's an oblique fissure, but there's an additional transverse fissure. So now on the right side, we have an upper lobe and a lower lobe, but here we have an additional middle lobe. Now, these fissures vary considerably. There are variations that you'll see. And this picture actually shows a variation. Quite often, I would say in about a third of specimens, the transverse fissure is incomplete. You see, that doesn't go all the way along as it is usually shown to do. In fact, if I took a pair of scissors, I would easily separate that, and you could dissect out that middle lobe, even though that fissure is incomplete. Now, I have to say the terminology here is rather poor and very confusing. Upper lobe, lower lobe. So often, the physician who doesn't know his anatomy will examine the chest and run his stethoscope down the front of the chest and say, that's fine. Here on the left side, there's the upper lobe there, and then I come down here and there's the lower lobe. Examining the back of the chest, you'll say, oh, jolly good. There's the upper lobe there, and then down here somewhere is the lower lobe. It's not true. Do you see, when you run your stethoscope down the front of the chest on the left side, for practical purposes, I'm examining my upper lobe right the way down to there. When I turn the patient round and examine the back of the chest, when I, and I'll show you this again in the specimen, when I, up there, true, I'm listening into the upper lobe, when I get to about the third rib, which, as I've told you, is the spine of the scapula, when I get to there, with my stethoscope, there, I'm now starting to examine the lower lobe. So just to examine the front of the patient's chest, and say, oh, that's jolly good, chest is clear, fine. All you've been able to do is to say his upper lobe is clear. On the, on the left side. On the right side, upper lobe, middle lobe, tiny little bit of lower lobe there. So it's vital, if you're going to examine the chest properly, is to turn the patient over onto his side, lean the patient forward, turn the patient round, and examine the back of the chest in order to examine the lower lobe.